broadcasters. We've been watching and covering these games, and if already we feel some fatigue, what more these players? Yeah, oh especially for the side of Bren. Yeah. Bren has been playing ever since 11 a.m. Oh my goodness, yeah. you're absolutely right. An absolute it's, marathon. It's been 12 hours already uh, <laughs> since they woke up, you know? Like, now, of course, this is the final match of the evening, wherever you guys are currently tuning in from. The M2 World Championship will draw to a close after this sort of takes. Of course, we've already seen a few things here. Esmeralda, ban. Matilda, ban. No Diggy, no Yishin Shin. Boys, what are they going for in this match? At is, this point in time... Oh, sorry. Go ahead, Bones. Is it still B going to be the Claude? Because that is... Is, this, is it still going to be a Claude ban? Because... The truth is, if you let it slide, Burmese Ghouls, that is an auto pick for the first uh, first phase of pickings. Mm -hmm. But if you think about it, if you give the Claude to this uh, to Burmese Ghouls, then probably you can just get two power picks on your side and just try to adjust from there. Well, let's see what it's going to be because the Burmese Ghouls are going to be opted. Hey, guess what? Brody and Claude on the table, up for grabs for either side. So no matter what, the Burmese Ghouls have to choose one. And I'm feeling like they're going to lean more towards that Brody after that, uh, after their previous game in Game 6, getting absolutely uh, destroyed by the amount of scaling this particular hero has. And there we go. It's going to be the Boxia as well as the Claude. Hmm, at least they're getting the Claude coming in. So it's kind of like a trade-off in this sort of sense. But, you know, I'm pretty sure that Leo has to say about scalings coming in. Yeah, no, Burmese Ghouls, they're getting it in spades. After the Brody, they get the Lunox. They're in for one more lock-in. And if I were to read Brenny Sports' draft right, they have to focus on Lusty next before Banning comes in. And right now, Burmese Ghouls, they feel Lapu-Lapu. It's been a while since we've seen Lapu-Lapu. Mm -hmm. I think they really are going to try and help this Lapu Lapu as much as they can if, uh, if it does go in towards that Boxia lane. Oh. And I mean, it's only natural for Bren to say, hey, Lux, Lux, uh, Lusty, you've been doing such a good job on this show. Take it again. As we move into the second part of the pick ban phase here, this is going to be pretty difficult because both sides are lacking in certain areas. Another offlaner is missing. Is missing. Their junglers have been pretty much decided. The support's kind of still up in the air. Yu Zhong could be a ban here for the side of Burmese Ghouls. Like, you pick a Lapu Lapu. Yes, you would want to head up against a Yuzhong Lapu Lapu setup that's going to be 50 50. But if he does have the Baksha on his side, that makes all the difference. That's yeah. definitely something to ponder about. And, you know, there's still a few more bands to also consider about. <laughs> Silvana, past few games haven't been prioritized at all. So, do you think there's a possibility for that as well? Yeah, Burmese Ghouls might. Just because Lusty is on his show. Yeah, I would think that they could go just for like a full-on pick composition for the side of Bren, but I feel like it's more likely that Bren is going to ban. They, they ban out the jawhead, so obviously the Silvana is going to become close second here because, again, that's how the tier list goes when it comes to these supports, especially on tournament meta. Both ultimates, super, super effective. So now maybe is left hanging. Maybe is wondering, what am I going to play next? What other tanks or... Similar heroes can he play? And so far, Burmese Ghouls have seen success when they are put up against the wall like this. Last ban from the Ghouls is going to be Farsa. And Burmese Sports have one more. Ooh, looking like a great side lane, Aerith. It's Few who still does not have a hero here. Yeah, and I think Few is kind of okay with this. He's got a plethora of option, uh, plethora of options overall. I mean, they're not exactly the best, may not necessarily be the most meta, but the Burmese Ghouls here, if they could limit him even more, because they've been trying to match him pretty much the entirety of the game. They've been matching Brent Esports in their draft. So if they can narrow down on what exactly Few wants to take and put him in an uncomfortable spot, they might be able to abuse. Mm, Burmese Ghouls, they need a tank and a gold lane. Will they go for a double marksman? Double risky. marksman could... is risky, but could be... Oh, oh. oh boy. The hard counter for oh the boy. What? Wow. Wow. At the last possible moment, Burmese Ghouls, they still have something up their sleeves to surprise us.
<laughs> hey, if you're gonna win a championship, you need to be unpredictable. You gotta you need to bring a king yeah. in, and you gotta be styling. I mean, this is pretty interesting because it's working similarly to Diggy, where it's just going to shut down the mobility coming in from Brent Esports. They have a very clear escape mechanic with this. And Brent Esports, they have no way to really get in onto the fight except for Boxia, and he won't be able to get out. So tight corners, what used to be Brent Esports' favorite place in the world, now Burmese Ghouls will start to dominate here. They do have an in. If they get it right, the diversion from the Luoyi, but it's so... High risk, it's so high concept at this point. Exactly. Tight, narrow and jungle. Nah, don't fight there, Brett. Burmese ghouls, if you look at it, if they don't finish the game early, the scaling is going to favor the side of uh, the Philippines, Brent Esports. Yeah, I honestly really like this Loyi. We haven't seen that Loyi in a while now. Now, paired with this Boxer, you can definitely go even more places that the box here could not reach. So with that being said, this is our very final game. It is best of seven in the M2 World Championship 2020. Who will be your champions right here? Pop it in the chat. And if you guys are in the cinema, make sure you scream it out loud. Is it Permanent Schools? Is it Brad Esports? Back and towards the land of Tom for our last match here. Casters. It's been a long day, but we need a champion at the end of the day. We do need a champion. Burmese Ghouls, Bren Esports. One last game. One last showdown to show who is going to be sitting up here on top. Bren on the red side, Burmese Ghouls on the blue. As they take this nice and slow, they don't go with a buff start and immediately look to clear the mid wave. And, you know, overall, as we were kind of talking about how the matchups are going to go, we can already see uh, how the lane priorities have been given over oh. to either side. Again, Ruby DD with the rogue off meta pick, Grok. This is the lethal Grok in game seven. Ooh. It's risky, but we've seen it work before. And now the question really does come down to whether all oh, they get a catch on to few for now. It's looking pretty good, but now Flap's easy. Going in a pretty hard, but kid, nobody having the execute at the end of the day. So they're not going to go for the dive. Okay, so the Luyi pick on few will just keep people from Burmese ghouls. Let's say poked as much as possible. The damage is uh, the damage will be consistent. So Burmese ghouls, there might be times here when they are going to take objectives that they would just opt to go for that just because they don't have full HPs. It's not even just about the full HP. Yeah. It, really do, it really does come to, down to who is going to win this level 4. And it really it, it is leaning more towards the Burmese Ghouls, but under specific conditions here. Because Brent Esports, overall, you look at their composition, it's like, yeah, this makes sense. They go in, they take the fight, full mm. team fight, plenty of AoE damage, lots mm. of magic damage, got a pick, got a Lusty with that pick. It's it's almost perfect. But then you look at Burmese Ghouls, and you see the King's Calling, and you're like, ooh, that's, uh, that's kind of a problem. Because if we count the number of mobility uh, skills, and uh, spells coming out from Bren, that's at least four of them. Actually, uh, that's at least four of them, yes. Yep, yep. So again, great read here by the Burmese Ghouls playing the reactionary lineup despite being on blue side. The genius mind of Coach Panda here in action. Now, Turtle started here by Ace, and he's going to put a few beads on it. Again, Brody doing well for Brenny Sports in game number six here, game number seven. How the tables have turned. Now the fight has begun inside the river. Order Brilliance now popped here by Kid. He wants out. That's one ult counted down for each side as the Poissons is in for Flap TZ. They disengage. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm I mean, Kid can't switch over the Chaos Darkness anyway, so still he is going to be relevant in this turtle fight. Games take longer, then that means it favors the side of Brent. Now, oh, oh! Look at that magnet, the yin and the yang. Hold the up, version hold up, is there. Hold up, here we come. Bren, oh, fakes it. They're going to continue the fight, though, up north. Phew, first blood. Oh. Here comes D. He starts it strong. That's going to be a disengage. And now, Bren is disincentivized for going into this first turtle take. Hold up, they still want more. That's going to be called easy. Blazing duet out of here. And... Yeah, it's a push and pull. Yeah, it really is. And Few, unfortunately, making the mistake. He tried to fake it out with the rest of his team, especially with that fast rotation coming in from Brent Esports. And the rest of the team wants to get in. Now, Flap TZ, he jumps right on top of Kid. He drops out the Toys Poisson, as well as the Rejuvenate, in hopes that Lusty gets in time. He flickers on backwards, kicks back, ace into the fight. The King's calling his oh. up, but the damage has been done. Lord, he getting a double kill so early into this game. Oh, Few! He's so close to dying, doesn't oh. get hit. But it just bear, but he gets hit by the wild charge at the end of the day. Rubidi D. The next to fall.
overall huge win for Bren. Mm, and Bren Esports, they are finding the trades. Burmese Ghouls not backing down. And you could see a lot of things working to the side of uh, Bren Esports there. The kick on Ace was perfect. That's just what they needed at that certain point in time. Mm -hmm. The exact target. Now, quick item check before the five-minute mark. That's already tough boots onto Lusty. Carl Tizi picks up the Raptor Machete. He uses the ult to disengage. That's two chasing down onto him. And look down bottom. This is actually some pressure onto Ruby DD. I think Renny Sports have had it with this surprisingly lethal Grok. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yep. This is the first time that we see him hugging the turret. I mean, this. I mean, they have to make sure that he doesn't get too far away here. Because again, Grok with the power of nature, very annoying. Oh, he gets hit by a lot of bullies oh. here as well as the Chrono Finisher as well. But now they're trying to jump on top of Rebo. Oh, they almost catch him as well, forcing him to use uh, use the Purify and the rest of Burmese Ghouls. They pull back. Big place. Oh, Fatizi, what happened? One HP? I guess he was dueling with the two up top. And, Lapu Lunox. Uh, he calls it quits, yeah. Lapu Lunox oh, is just hold way up. too good. Blazing duet by Carl mm. Brr, Yeah, Down goes maybe. Kid can't answer back. Interesting entrance by Bren Esports. And right now, they're trying to go for this push. Looking for a conversion. Ace puts a few beads. Gonna be popping the Torn Apart memory from here on very soon now. Oh, nice wild charge here by Ruby DD. And they decimate Bren Esports from underneath the own tower. Three for none. The ghouls are feeling it. They are pouncing back. They're looking to really turn this into the brawl. And D, he knows that he has to throw himself under the fire. And Flapsy, he's gonna be dropping. Oh, he gets peeled nice back. Move. It's a great pull, but he does force out the rejuvenate. And nobody can really deal with him thus far. Not enough damage. Can he get the Cyclone's eye in time? He gets hit by the stun. Maybe steals the Cyclone's eye, but Flapsy, he's like, nah, she'll unity, and I'm rolling out. Okay, this is one of the things that Burmese schools is really good at. And Ruby DD. Ooh. They've been going for a lot of these. Uh, uh, what's the name of the ultimate of the Grok? Wild Charge. Wild Charge. Charge. This is for the longest time we haven't used Grok in the meta, and this is the first time that he was used. Wild Charge with the Flicker. They've been using that time and again, and it's almost always certain that he's gonna be very near onto those rocks and just knock up the enemy. Yeah, and that's what's so nice about Ruby DD's build here. Nice knock up here. Oh, oh. what you? Salmon force from underneath. In comes maybe the King's Calling. Keep no. people down. No way. That's going to be Lusty. Oh my god, the tag team is in effect. Now, that's going to be few from the back line losing the kid. It's a duel. Mage on mage action. And that's going to be the wipeout on a two few. Oh. That the line. That's going to be the order brilliant away for kid. D take down here by Flapteezy. That's a small consolation prize. One for three. Big wins. Big wins all across the board for the Burmese Ghouls. They're very happy with this trade at the end of the day. They should be holding on for Bren Esports Burmese Ghouls. This is the this is going as the way they planned it. They get pickups, they get kills, they control the mid game, they make the most out of Ace, mid game spike, that's it. Oh no, mm. Kid gets caught in by Flap Teasy, and here comes Ruby DD looking for a target. That's gonna be a miss, a rotation in by few, and this is Brainy Sports pressuring the lane. So far, so good for the Burmese Ghouls, they're winning these fights, but just the same, Brainy Sports are finding pickoffs where they can and pressuring the map. Look at this, a push by Rebo. Yeah, they're literally, I mean, both sides are literally looking for those flanks, getting behind the tier one turrets and going for these heavy, heavy dives. But maybe that King's Calling is super effective against Rebo. Rebo has to be extra careful in that King's Calling. Purify ain't gonna save him. Look at the enchanted talisman even being used here for Rebo. And that is quite unusual because a lot of the Harrod side laners are going for the Calamity Reaper and the Feather of Heaven. Yeah, Flap Easy here senses something. Oh, nice pull by maybe. That's going to be the Tortoise Poissons. And as well, I believe the Revitalize dropping here. But already two big ticket resources gone for Brenny Sports. Well timed for the 32nd turtle coming up for Burmese Ghouls, the very last one. They'll have their ultimates at the end of the day. And I think I, I did see Rebo actually purchasing uh, the Calamity Reaper first. So don't worry about that. The Talisman, Enchanted Talisman came in a little bit later. Lusty, he's going to be looking for an opportunity to kind of, you know, secure their 
different position around the turtle, so they have first dibs for now, but uh, Ruby DD says hello to few and few. Now in, under a lot of scrutiny here, the King's calling down right in the middle of the lane here. Nobody from the side of Brent Esports wants to walk forward, so it's going to be a free pick with no returns. Maximum efficiency, that is the best use of King's calling. You see how it fits the circle down the middle right so perfectly, and that's exactly what maybe is doing here, but hold up. What's this? A nice trade for the turtle. Brenny Sports lets it go. It's not come in in time. But then again, you have to think about what oh, they did there. Oh, here we go. Wild charge by Ruby DD. What a bait. That's got DD taking him down. And the life bars are dropping. Flap DD shut down by Ace. And the fight continues. Where do they go? Salmon Force already expended here by Rebo. And that's both teams back and off. Lusty looking for more. And hold up, hold up. 10 to 7, 24K to 24K. This game is. Darn close, but the Burmese goals are up by one turret. Golden Staff is now up for Carl TZ, and you can see the trades. Ruby DD maybe is just playing the keep away game. He knows that if he stays alive, he can just keep on going for those pokes. Now, if you would look at the items, Lusty here with the Athena Shield, Rebo does have the Calamity Reaper with Enchanted Talisman. Enchanted Talisman on few as well. He's probably gonna go for something or of a, something of a Ice, oh, Ice Queen Wand or, uh, or a Lightning Cruncher or probably a Glowing Wand as well. Yeah, those are some pretty good shoutouts there, especially... Re oh, wait, oh! D, he's in a lot of trouble. He's gonna die here. There's nothing much he can do. He's gonna get run down, especially with the oh! amount of movement speed that he has. And Flapteezy just to secure the kill with the shield unity. But now, rotation is gonna be placed in the middle just so they can steal away the orange buff again. And then, <laughs> unfortunately, Flapteezy is gonna be, hey, I'm the carry now. Oh, actually, hit. that is the case. And now Kid gets caught in here. That's gonna be quite a hit from the back line as Ruby DD goes in with a wild charge. Maybe here, caught out Flapteezy in. Inside the turtle, uh, the purple pit, and that's going to be the back out. Oh, Ooh. nice knock up, nice wave of the dragon, but they take out Flap TZ first. Lusty still in oh. here, Carl DZ, blazing duet. He's trying to get one. That's going to be Kid, and they back out. Oh, nice power, nice swing by Ruby DD, but it's not enough. Double kill here for Carl TZ, two for one. Oh. And while that's happening, we have Rebo and Few going to the bottom lane. Oh. Oh, Lord's up, Lord's yep. up, it's free. Lord's up, and they stop, and they gatekeep the Burmese ghouls from walking up forward. They made sure they uh, they teleported right in front of the base, making sure that they're standing on towards the top right side, just in case if D wanted to get a little bit more physical with them. But now they have the river crab under their side. Cartesi is kind of huge in these situations, and uh, as of right now, Ace he's got the burst damage, but Cartesi he's got some strong AOE. Remember the last time that they picked the Claude, he it was relying on Claude alone. The damage output came from him alone. Right now for Bren Esports, they have this insurance policy. They have Rebo and the Harris, and both of them will have to carry the damage of this team. Not to mention, Few just purchased the Necklace of Durant, and that's going to be very, very helpful, especially against Ruby DD as well as D. And uh, let's see how this fight is. It's about to occur. They want to look for that big engagement. Here we go, Lord, at about a sixth of his health. That's going to be a reset. Flapteezy already pops here. The Poissons rolling out. And it seems what? like Ruby DD is going to be the first target. Oh, he goes for the swing, goes for the wild charge, and misses. That's a nice free pickoff for Bren E Sports. Nothing for Burmese goals to take here. Hold up. They jump in. Oh. Nice pull out the Lusty. He goes down. Kid gets the kill. And they are going to be backing off one for one. Blazing oh. Duet. Blazing Duet by Carl DZ alongside his Alpha Force to keep them pinned down. That's going to be a double. Down goes the Ace. Down goes maybe D as well. Kid is the only survivor in this onslaught. Ladies and gentlemen, Brand Esports have gone four for one. Let's go, Brand Esports. They see the King's calling. It's gone. They run straight down and force the engagement onto the Burmese goals. And now will profit the Lord as well Kid. as a mid tier. Uh, oh my goodness. They should be able to get this. No, can they get this? Yes, oh, they got the oh, as well. Oh. The King's calling. And Really worked their way, but look at Carl DZ trying oh, to go for Kid! Yeah. He takes down Kid! No. Kid just falls right in front of his base, and so far, Brandy Sports are not acknowledging any of Burmese Ghouls' efforts to protect themselves. So far, I think the Burmese Ghouls, they are trying here to just bait Brandy Sports. Again, nice pulls by maybe so far, but I think Brandy Sports knows that as soon as the pull happens, 
they leave who's gonna die and then just disengage and then come back around. This is the whole rope dope Burmese ghouls I've been using all series long. Mm -hmm. And not to mention that this is the first time we're actually seeing the Burmese ghouls starting to really sweat against Bren. They're making some really unnatural mistakes, like similar to game one, but with Lord marching on through, they can't afford to lose their members. They have to break this Lord and they have to be able to protect themselves. But Bren, they want to force the situation. They're gonna be starting with the inhibitor down on bot side. Few taking a little bit of damage, but D wants to go even a little bit further. He's trying to get a few. He's trying to execute few, but instead he gets kicked on backwards. Left easy now trapped all by himself in the king's calling. Rebo gets pulled on in. He's trying to get on out of there. Maybe flickers forward, but now oh. this is where they turn oh. the tides here. Run esports. The oh my this goodness! Is it? Kid is the only one left. Can he defend, ladies and gentlemen? Brad Esports are your M2 champions from the lower bracket. They crawled out. Bren Esports are your M2 World Champions. With one perfect team fight, this is it. We're going to pass it to our host to celebrate our winners itself. And, well, this will be the end of our match. But now it's time for Bren Esports to go and claim what is rightfully theirs. The this Chrome itself. Moment. Thank you so much, from The Caster's desk. This is us signing off. Thank you very much, Butters, Gideon Q, Leo, as well as Contra and Lysander. Can you hear them screaming? What an incredible series, an incredible M2. They are going to be looking back at the history books and M2, the closest best of seven you have ever seen in Mobile Legends history. Now, I'm pretty sure all over in the Philippines, they are screaming, Prang la Malakas. Congratulations, people. Congratulations, Congratulations, Philippines! Wow! All right, let us catch our breaths for a while now. Ladies and gentlemen, if you're still watching us, this is not the end. We'll come back in maybe, say, half an hour with the live media interview with our champion team, Brand Esports. But of course, we do want to say a big thank you and congratulations as well. To Burmese Ghouls. To Burmese Ghouls. Thank you so much. Well done. Very, very good final they put up for us. A 2-0 lead from Bren, and then coming back to equalize at a Game 7. Yeah. Incredible game from both sides. A big round of applause at home for those two teams. You know, I, I almost want to say this. It might sound cliche, but I can hear the screams coming in from the Philippines right now. I'm just looking at our casters. There's everybody so happy. Wolf is on his laptop, updating on Facebook right now on the results that just happened. In just a while, we'll be presenting the awards to our champion team. But of course, the Burmese Ghouls, thank you so much. Please make your way off stage. We will see you in a while. Second place, though. Big round of applause, please, Big to people in the of studio. Applause. Second so place. Glad. Second place. Make your way down off stage. Make your way off stage. Make your way. Follow up. the floor manager. You know yeah. what? Do follow the do follow do do follow the marshals. Thank you so much, Thank you Burmese so much Ghouls. for putting up a great finals for all of us to watch back home as well as here in the studio. The, Man, I gotta say, the atmosphere in this studio, Joakim. Yeah, oh the gosh. atmosphere, emotions running wild. We have, of course, happiness and sadness. The higher you climb, the harder the fall. But of course, there can only be one winner. Of course, we got the prize, the presentation coming up in just a while. We're just waiting for everyone to be ready before we invite a few guests on stage to present the prize. Lysander, you are invested in the game. How is it like for we you? We were all invested. I'm telling you, they are going to look back. One day, the analyst desk, they're always going to bring back M2. They say, remember M2, remember M2. There was this team that made it 2-0. And then there's the other team that brought it to game seven. There's always going to be a reference back to this M2. That's what I'm going to say. Yep. And uh, I, I, I hope they remember this. I hope this keeps up for M3 because this has been an incredible game. Now, to present the stay the medals for the championship team can we please welcome the chief executive of the singapore tourism board mr keith tan on stage please mr keith tan thank you so much for joining us thank you sir yes sir thank you so much lysander do the honors for the championship team for m2 world championship your m2 world champion from the philippines Bren Esports! I'm now going to call up each of the players to receive their awards from our VIP. 
First up, we have Rebo. Woo! Round of applause for all these champions up on stage right now. Thank you. Next up, Carl TZ. And next, we have Few. Their tank, Lusty. And Flap Teasy. Not forgetting their substitute players as well. Coco. As well as AJ. Definitely deserve their support as well. Congratulations to these players. And of course, the man that brought them all together, their coach and manager, Ducky. Waving the flag for Philippines. A great honor for all Filipinos at home. Mobile Legend history has been made here. All right. Now, teams, can we please have a picture of Mr. Keith Tan for the cameras right now? Let's all smile for the cameras. We'll give it maybe, say, six seconds for all your pictures to go down for the cameras. Smile with your eyes, boys. I know the mass are blocking those big, big smiles. A smile with those eyes, boys. Congratulations, you are champions! All right, we're just waiting for the thumbs up from our producers to make sure that we got the pictures down already. Thank you so much, Mr. Keith Tan, once again, the Chief Executive of the Singapore Tourism Board. Please safely make your way off stage. Now, for Brand Esports, can I invite you to just take a few steps back, a few steps back to give space for our next VIP coming up on stage to present the check for the final MVP, Member of Parliament and Skoga Patron, Mr. Melvin Young on stage, sir. Thank you so much. All right. Producers, we need some help. We've not been told the results. I have a good guess. Okay, I have a good guess. I mean, we have been all watching the games. It is, it is the best fencer at M2, the Lancelot Specialist, Carl oh, TZ! It was top secret, Lysander. Top secret, that is an open secret. Philippines, you are, you have been so blessed with Carl TZ as your Lancelot Specialist has done so well across the entire M2 tournament. All right. Carl Teasy and Mr. Melvin Young, could we have you in the center stage for a picture, please, of the camera? Carl Teasy and Mr. Melvin Young, could we have you center stage for a picture? Thank you so much, sir. And thank you so much, Carl Teasy. Show off your check. Show off your MVP yeah. check. There you go, Carl. You're going to remember this for a long time, my friend. You're going to remember this amazing moment for a long time. Everyone smile. We're waiting for the go-ahead. All the pictures to be taken. Front page news tomorrow, I'm pretty sure, in the Philippines and here in Singapore. I'm assuming we are done. Thank you so much once again, Mr. Melvin Young. Thank, Thank you, you so sir. much. And of course, Bren, it's about time. We're going to need two of you guys. All right. Bren Esports, can I have one on the left and one on the right to lift your plaque now? Bring it to the front first. We're going to do this on the count of three. All Bring right. it to the front. So, Ducky, take the plaque. Put it down first. Put it down. Take the plaque. Yeah, be careful, it it's, it's heavy, heavy. It's, it's heavy. heavy. Yeah. It is heavy. Two people? Yep, all right, guys. Move it to the front. Take yeah, it down it to first. The front. Yep. Be all right, be careful with it, guys. All, all right. right, put all it right. down. All right, all right. Bring it to the front. Ducky, take a few steps forward, yeah, Brent Esports. The front. Okay. Joking, we're going to do this on the count of three. Like one, one, two, two three. three. Go! The champions once again, Brand Esports for M2 World Championships, Mobile Legends Bang Bang, deliver one of its greatest finals ever. Lysander, I dare say, Brand Lang Malakas! Lang Malakas, indeed.